Welcome back, everybody, to the Sydney Jean Charles Road to the Show on MLB The Show 22. We are going to find out what the diamond archetype is all about today. We only need three more points to get there. And I'm not even sure if there's anything after diamond archetype or what these tasks will help us towards. But we just need to get like three extra base hits or eight regular hits. We'll get there eventually. Today, it's only a matter of time. We're a game back of first place right now as the Brewers have won 10 games in a row. It's been a pretty competitive division. So it looks like they have Sydney at least today, hitting in the five spot, which I believe is the first time he's done that. They've kind of moved him around between three and six, but I'm cool hitting fifth. Paul Goldschmidt hitting seventh, though, doesn't make a lot of sense the way he is playing. Wow, Jose Barrios has been outstanding this year. A 0 7 8 whip. Could be a tough uh, matchup here to start the episode as we get underway. Episode 29 here in the road to the show. Thank you for all the support to this point. And if you can please leave a like on the video, that would be much appreciated. And if you haven't already done so, hit that subscribe button. Been putting out a lot of these episodes lately. It's kind of been the main series on the channel. And there should be some new stuff to check out here as I continue wrapping up the Giants. And I'm really itching to play some more older games to just, uh, you know, see what they bring to the table here in 2022. Here is Sydney's first at bat in Canada, taking on Jose Barrios. Waiting to see that slurve. I know it's nasty when he can locate it. Fouled off and falling behind here in the first at bat. Three sinkers. I think he throws the slurve this time. He must be saving it. Two and two. Driven out to right field. That one's pretty well hit. And we start the episode with a solo home run. Sydney against one of the top pitchers this season, Jose Barrios. 13 home runs on the season. And he didn't go to any of those uh, two strike pitches I thought he would. I thought for sure he'd just try to get the strikeouts. Solid start here for Sydney. I like to show the first at bat every episode, and that's uh, the way you want to start these episodes. Ooh, I gotta admit, I'm not good at these. Wow, almost brought it back. Chapman hits the two run home run. That was about as close as I think I've ever really been. I don't think I've robbed a home run in the show ever. I don't have as many years uh, experience playing the game as many of you, but this has always been uh, a struggle for me. Let's see. Yeah, I mean, he actually wasn't close. That wasn't robbable. He's a couple feet too short for that. So we're trying to help this team come back now. It's 3-1, to one, runner on second base. A big narrative lately has been Sydney's struggles with runners in scoring position. 23 RBIs is still tied second on the team, and he's not been good in these situations. Move to third? No? Okay. Yeah, you don't want to risk it. It was in front of the catcher, and we have two down. My first instinct is just to be aggressive on the base paths. Barrios has not thrown Sydney a slurve, and of the four pitches, it's the one he's the least confident in. That time, just the fastball. I've been waiting for off-speed all day, and he's just not throwing it. Third at-bat against Barrios. We still have just the one homer on Sydney's solo home run. And there's the slurve. Hammer deep to center. This one stays in the yard. To the eighth inning, they turn to Jordan Romano, and we have a runner in scoring position again. Two down. 182 with runners in scoring position. It doesn't have to be this hard. Romano throws pretty fast. 97 on that one. 
2-0. Okay, missing wildly now. 3-0, Dickerson on deck. Maybe just pitching around Sydney here, but I think I have to be ready. Green light. And he's just underneath this one. Flying to center. Blue Jays pick up the win. We have not been a prolific scoring offense this season. And Sydney goes one for four. Had one of our only impactful hits of the day. On to game two, where we're going to take on Kevin Gossman. Sydney's seventh in all star voting. That's something to keep track of now every episode. Doesn't seven feel a little low? I don't know, 269, like a dozen home runs is good. But that's like middle of the pack for center fielders in the conference. Or league, they don't call it conferences in baseball, do they? Baseball's got to do everything differently. One and one. Oh, come on. Sat back on the slider, base hit left field. Getting some quality hits off some quality pitchers. And that one is hit sharply, and it's into the outfield. Well then, Sydney's moving to third. Matt Chapman just missed badly. Like, come on, that's not even close. Paul Goldschmidt with runners at the corners. But Gossman's got him 0-2. That's unfortunate. One down for Carlson, and that should be enough to tag. That's going to be contested, though. It's Hernandez, and it's up the line. We move ahead to the fifth inning, and the Cardinals have the offense going. Now it's 4-1. They bring in Hunjin Ryu, and the bases are loaded for Sydney. He's hitting under 200 as a righty this year. I hadn't realized it was that bad. So Ryu throws a little slower. Gets a lot of ground balls. Let's see if we can at least tack on a run here. That was a good pitch to do it. Popped it up. What is it with runners on base that makes Sydney like a shell of what he's supposed to be? Two on, two down in the sixth. Again as a righty. Ryu misses inside. Good try. We get into a good count. He's still favoring his fastball primarily. And he throws it low. Ball three. Ground ball, and that is down the line. Sydney aggressive 3-0. One run will score. It's a double. So we get enough chances eventually one of them comes through. It's probably enough too to raise the uh, the average a bit, even with the failures already today. So a nice day for the offense as we should be able to win this game too. Lots of scoring in this one. Cardinals victorious 12-6. We put up three more in the ninth inning, had 20 hits today. That's more like it. You're going to need to keep improving your fielding skills to get where you want to go. So we're going to have some fielding performance gain boosts. All right, have we unlocked that archetype yet? We've had some extra base hits, I know that. Still 97, so I need two more games worth of appearances. Or one extra base hit. Let's go take care of that. From Toronto, we take the trip now to Fenway Park. Meeting up with the Boston Red Sox. I always like when I get a chance to play in Fenway. It's just a fun ballpark to play in here in the show. Driving a run. Saw some good feedback about the batting clutch rating maybe being a reason why Sydney struggles with runners on base. And... That's a good point. And I've already hit the cap on that. 
It's just not a rating I've given any attention to in the build. And maybe that's something I have to look at changing. So if we check out the stats here, his clutch isn't in that circle. But here we see batting clutch. Well, it's not bad. It's at 78. Maybe it's just me not having my best swings when it counts the most. Here is another one of those chances. We've been looking at a lot of pitches today. They've been so careful. Good strike there from Hudson. Everything away in this at bat. Two and two. Got him with the sinker. Maybe a little out in front. I could mess with the build a little bit and try to give a boost to something like batting clutch just to see what happens. I know he's certainly got enough contact and power to handle even a slight decrease there. But once we also get a diamond archetype that opens up the last perk slot, and maybe I go look at something more secondary like that. O2. That's on the ground and down the line. We're stretching that one. Sydney with a double. Pretty much identical to his last one. A little contact swing there to get Sydney in scoring position. They're trying to hold him at second. And Dickerson grounds out. They walk Goldschmidt, and here's Carlson. And he's one of the hitters really struggling this year. And wow, what a flip. That was so clean. And the Red Sox end the inning. I want to see that again. What was that, Bobby Dahlbeck? That was just in one motion. Let's slow it down here. Backhand, flip, and it's right there. Rafael Devers hitting it right to Sydney. I have Devers in my Rockies franchise over on the main channel, and he's been the superstar of that team. Thankfully, he doesn't... Uh, Show the home run power off in that at bat. Runner at second as we move ahead to the fifth inning. Trying to take Hudson out of the game. 189 average with runners in scoring position. Oh, that's a curveball I should let go. I want to hit as a righty so I can try to pull one over the monster. Two and one. Missing away again. That would have been ball four. Count full now. Everything's down. Like every at bat seems to be a game plan and they just attack the same spot. Going the other way. But it's an easy play in left. Well, he will hit as a righty this time. So we can try to work on that average and see if we can hit one off of or over the monster. Well, and Taylor tried to help me out, too. How was I late on that? On the ground. Got the slider again. Well, that's going to be a long one there. And Sydney will slide into second. We've seen some comical errors in this episode. Now, I don't want a base running error. They're trying to hold him. It's a one-run ball game. Dickerson 0-2 in the air. Get back. Well, I'm going three. Is that the smart decision? Yep. Goldie is putting up like all-star numbers and they have him hitting seventh. That shouldn't be happening. Runners at the corners. And you knew he was going to drive him in. 3-1. And we defeat the Boston Red Sox. We're on a nice roll right now, winning a lot of baseball games. Sydney goes one for four with the double. Now it's going to get real interesting. We have reached the end of this program. Diamond archetypes. We have the anomaly. 
That's Power and Speed. We have the Showboat and the Duke. Of course, we're going with the Anomaly. And then I get to open a perk as well. I'm open to something besides Contact and Power. Batting Clutch and Arm Strength. I might have to look at that one. I have two. I probably have one right now on. Interesting. Significant contact boost on the first two pitches of an at-bat. I didn't know they had situational perks like that. I want to hold on to that one. This diamond version of the anomaly is going to give us a couple extra points into power, arm, speed, and stealing. And it boosts him up to an 83. Oh, is it still just four perk slots? There's a spot for a fifth one there, I thought. Oh yeah, and this perk had the significant contact boost on inside pitches. So that would be one thing you could do with the multiple loadouts, is equipping different situational perks like that. I think I'm going to try the jumpstart. I know like it drops some of the ratings here, but why not give it a try? We also have some new cleats that are going to be a bit of an upgrade too. So we can make up for losing some of that speed swapping out the perk. Diamond power, that's what it says here. So we can earn more diamond perks. Not a ton more to do here. I mean, the diamond equipment's gonna be nice to earn because that stuff can get spendy. So we finally have the full diamond loadout now, at least perks and archetype. I don't have all diamond gear or anything. That's kind of the next thing, I guess, to slowly work up. And I don't play anything else on this game, so I don't earn stubs, and I will be spending exactly zero dollars on them. So, active perk. There we go. And we want to be aggressive here early in at bats when we have the chance. So, two on, two down, facing Tanner Houck. How do you have 92 speed and zero steel? That just sounds like it shouldn't be a combo. What is it, the first two pitches? I don't think it's active now. And the thing is, too, is the pitcher can just, you know, not throw in the zone and leave you either chasing stuff and getting you into bad habits. So we'll see if I want to keep that perk on, but I'm probably going to swap them out and just try stuff out. That one on the inside pitches, I don't think had, like, uh, any kind of a limit. Left center, that is down. One was going to score for sure. We're trying to get the second run. Got it, RBI double, two nothing cards. One thing Sydney hasn't done a lot of in recent episodes is get multi-hit games. I feel like almost every game is a one for four. But we have two on here, one down, already one big two-run hit. Yeah, we're hitting in the 200s now with runners in scoring position. Still not good enough. 2-0. A little over-aggressive on that one. They're testing my patience with these at-bats. 3-1. Sometimes you just got to work out the walk here. 3-1 from Pavetta. See you later! How about that for a two-hit day? Five RBIs for Sidney Jean Charles as he crushes Pavetta to right field. They've been just trying to chip away at the corner so much. Eventually, they're going to miss over the middle. Unless he was just trying to throw a strike there. But Sydney with his 14th home run, and this is the first time he's hit a three-run homer at the major league level. 451 feet. How do you follow that up? 29 RBIs now. We're boosting those numbers in a big way today. This is a career high, I gotta think. Looks like they're just trying to have Pavetta get through this game for him. Right field, not hit as well. But basically the same pitch he homered off of him. The cards keep winning. Nice little run we're going on here. 
You got to think the Brewers have slipped up and we're back in first place, right? We are by a half game. Not that it matters that much this early in the season. I'm going to tweak the build again here. I want to try the insider info one. I think this one had more value, I want to say. Could be wrong, but it just universally helps inside pitches. And those have never been my strength hitting. Seventh. So they move Goldschmidt up, per my request. Not like that. They still think Sydney's in a cold streak. I don't think you're in a cold streak when you're consistently going like one for four and reaching base at the rate he is. Yeah, we got this presentation today. I really like this presentation style they have. I think it's really clean. Chris Sale. All right, that's going to be a fun challenge here for Sydney. We get a few more right-handed at-bats here in Fenway then. Started off here with a routine fly ball. Story hammers one to right center. Ooh, got a chance at it here. Sydney gets there. Sixth now in center fielder all-star voting. He is rising. Chris Sale. Scoreless ball game. Right past him there, behind it. 0-2 contact swings coming. And no contact is made. Let's see if we can make some contact this time. But it's not just Sydney. No one's hitting Chris Sale well right now. He's attacking the zone. He's kind of matching my aggressiveness here. And now I'm kind of scaling it back. 0-1. That's a base hit to left. Let's boost those numbers here as a righty. Yeah, give me the stat cast on that one. Just a smooth base hit, 114 exit velocity. That's hit pretty hard. Christian Arroyo, revenge game. I love the revenge games. One, two, sail, slider, see you later. Eight strikeouts. Catcher Roberto Perez. Two and two. This is a strikeout, isn't it? Chris Sale looking really good as no one's scoring in this game. We'll move ahead now to the seventh inning and Sale is in there. 109 pitches in. And he's staying in the game. See if he's starting to lose his command though. Like he's gotta. He's getting older. That slider though is like all the way up. I gotta be ready for that. 2 0. Does he really go with a 2 0 slider here to try and get me to chase it? Nope. Just comes right back with the fastball. Not panicking. Three straight to start the at bat. Thought maybe a slider there was possible. Now we're three and one. I think slider here. I think he's okay walking, Sid. And that's what happens. But it's a fastball and it should have been a strike. <laughs> now he's taken out of the game. Pretty good outing though for Chris Sale. And no one has scored yet in this one. I don't think fans in Fenway are used to games just breezing through like this. Usually it's like the four and a half hour long games against the Yankees. And before you know it, you spent your whole day at the ballpark or in front of the TV. Two on, nobody down. It's one nothing. On the ground, and that's probably a double play. Nope, he double clutched it. We're hoping that one is potentially enough. Do they want Sid to steal here? 3-0 against the lefty. Not feeling it. Arroyo walks. Cam Gallagher bases loaded. Just put it in play. Make something happen, Cam. Yeah, that is probably not enough, though. Hey, 
away. He beat it out. 2-0. That could be big. They got an error there. We've seen a lot of errors today on the base paths. What happened here? Catcher jammed. Going right to the first baseman. Oh. He wasn't even out at second. They didn't get anybody. Edmundo Sosa. Not often we get to see him taking that bat here in the series. One and two. And this one is grounded to short. The inning is over. We go bottom nine. Strikeout, walk. And now J.D. Martinez. I'm just going to back up a step. Into shallow center, not ideal. That's going to land. Down for a hit. Throw in three. Not in time. Runners at the corners for Boston. Two batters later. I'm not familiar with Sedan Rafella, if I'm saying that correctly. Two in scoring position. And he flies to Sid. And he puts it away. 2-0. Cardinals win the game. Andrew Heaney goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with Chris Sale. And on this day, he picks up the win. Sydney goes one for three with the walk. We have four teams in this division that are at least 500. Two that are well over us and the Brewers. I feel like the offense is beginning to come around a little bit. If we check out the lineups tab here, we still have four cold streaks. Like, Sydney isn't even going like 0 for 4 ever, but he's in a cold streak. The average climb today. I don't know. I really wish they would adjust the lineup, though, and have us go Edmund, maybe Sydney, Goldschmidt, Arenado, O'Neill. I think that would be the ideal top five. I think we'd score more runs that way, too. Like, Sosa's a decent on-base guy, but should he be batting second right now? I don't know if he's hitting well enough. Doesn't have the power either. And then you have O'Neal here and Dickerson. And these are just kind of guys that throw off the momentum right now, along with Carlson. How has Moises Gomez been doing? He's hitting 268, six home runs. Still down at double A with C potential, 62 overall. We haven't seen anybody that Sydney's played with really join him here at the big league level. To be fair, he did it pretty quickly. When it comes to all star voting, Sydney is in sixth right now for center field, and I probably don't expect him to be an all star this season. For one, you have Acuna way out in front. And then there's just a lot of ground to make up here. And then to even be a backup, I mean, there are three other or two other positions that have some pretty good standouts as well. But what I do think Sydney has a good chance of this year is potentially Rookie of the Year. And right now he's in first place. There's Heliot Ramos. I think that's how many of you pointed out the pronunciation of his name. Ramos, 66 overall outfielder. If we check out the team, Sydney is fourth in hits, first in home runs with Goldschmidt behind him. This isn't a great home run hitting team, though. He's second in RBIs, first in stolen bases. See, this is a really disappointing part of the team, too, because we should be good at this. We have some really fast players, and they're just never on base to steal. Sydney has the highest OPS on the team, higher than Goldschmidt, 27 walks. Let's go check out the rates here. Ooh, three war here in the first half is nice. Third highest walk rate, looks like fourth worst strikeout rate. That's at 26.5, slowly getting better. And then a 294 ISO is fantastic. That is going to wrap up this episode a little bit shorter, but I did want to sprinkle in some shorter episodes to see how well they perform and what like the audience retention is on videos like that. 
But I hope you had a good time with the episode. Please leave a like if you did. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. There's a long way to go with Sydney Jean Charles. And I'll see you all next time. Enjoy your weekend, everybody.